Nigeria's sole representative in the CAF Confederation Cup Rangers International earlier this evening beat Bantu FC of Lesotho 2-1 in the first leg of the playoff at the Set Soto Stadium, Maseru. Bright Silas gave the Flying Antelopes the lead after the 19th minute, and the goal was Silas's fourth of the competition for Inugu-based club side. Godwin Aguda made it 2-0 for Rangers in the 87th minute, but Lazola Jokul. Joko Jowane reduced the deficit for the Lesotho League champions in additional time. A second leg comes up on January 20th at Innamdi Azikiwe Stadium, and the winner in the two-leg fixture will qualify for the group phase of the competition. A 2019 Nigeria Professional Football League season has kicked off this evening and across six league venues with three home victories, one away win, and two draws recorded. Inuyo El Kanemi Warriors recorded the only away win thanks to a 1-0 victory against Aqua United. Ayimba kicked off their campaign with a 2-0 home win over MFM at the Ayimba International Stadium in Aba. In another NPFL game, Nassara United beat Abia Warriors 1-0 in Lafia. Kano Pillars also edged Heartland of Awari 1-0. At the Loring Township Stadium, Quara United drew 1-0 at home with Sunshine Stars. In the English Premier League, Manchester United has maintained their 100% record under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with an impressive 1-0 success over Tottenham at Wembley. Marcus Rashford struck the only goal of an entertaining contest after the impressive Paul Pogba had sent him free with a sublime thorough pass on the stroke of halftime. The result sees Solskjaer become the first ever Red Devils boss to win his opening six matches in all competitions. It also moves a sixth place United level with Arsenal and within six points of Chelsea in fourth. Earlier, Everton lifted themselves back into the top half of the Premier League table with a 2-0 home win over Bournemouth. In tennis, it's less than 24 hours to the first Grand Slam of the year. And Evergreen Roger Federer has pondered the luck of his longevity and the sport ahead of his bid for a hat-trick of Australian Open titles. Seeking a 21st Grand Slam title and a record 7th in Melbourne, the Swiss will plough into the 20th consecutive Australian Open on Monday with a first-round clash against Osberg Dennis Istomin. While suffering an assortment of niggles common to all hardened professionals, Federer's only major layoff came in 2016 after he tore his menaces when running a bath for his twin daughters. Meanwhile, world number one Novak Djokovic says he's satisfied with how the Grand Slams are reacting to a player-led push for bigger paychecks, but that's all about, to, about increasing his own bank balance. Djokovic, who also serves as the president of the ATP Players' Council, has led a push for a higher percentage of earnings generated at the world's biggest tennis tournaments be distributed to players. He said ahead of the start of the Australian Open, he was content with recent prize money changes which includes a 14% rise in the prize pool for the Melbourne event. A senior member of the Saudi royal family, Prince Turkey Al Faisal, has warned against the United States' plan to pull troops out of Syria. He made the comment ahead of U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's visit to Saudi Arabia as part of his Middle East tour to Iraq, Jordan, Egypt and Bahrain. Al Faisal blamed the world community for neglecting the Syrian people and said that his, the U.S. troop withdrawal would further complicate rather than find any solution to it and further entrench not only the Iranians but also the Russians and Bashar al-Assad. He added that the departure of Defense Secretary James Mattis in December was unlikely to help matters either. Meanwhile, Pompeo, speaking earlier in Qatar, called for an end to the 18-month economic boycott of Qatar. Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Bahrain and Egypt, all U.S. allies, cut ties with Qatar in June 2017, accusing the oil-rich states of supporting the region's terrorist groups and Iran, Saudi Arabia's main regional rival. Uh, and as for the uh, GCC, in, in my statement, I, I made clear, um, we're all more powerful when we're working together when disputes are limited and when we have uh, common challenges uh, in the region and around the world, uh, uh, disputes between uh, uh, countries that have a shared objective are never, never helpful. And the main news again.
Five of the six South-South governors today asked the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Walter Nogan, to shun his planned arraignment at the Code of Conduct Tribunal on Monday. The governors who made the position known after an emergency meeting in Abuja today say the trial is not only vindictive but persecutory as well. Also today, the Vice President, Yemi Oshibajo, asked Nigerians to honor the nation's fallen heroes by maintaining unity and peaceful coexistence. Professor Shibajo was speaking at the Interdenominational Service to mark the 2019 Armed Forces Remembrance Day in Abuja. We also brought you reports that the Saudi Prince Turkey Al Faisal has warned the U.S. against a troop withdrawal from Syria, saying the action would have a negative impact. And that's it on the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night. Thank you.